All I want is a congenial party. Ten minutes after leaving Newark, we shall be just one happy party. Properly chaperoned, out for a real good time. I want no grouches or pessimists. Arthur C. Tauck. In the summer of 1925, the son of an immigrant, 27-year-old Arthur C. Tauck, loaded a handful of passengers into a Studebaker for a carefully planned 1,000-mile vacation through New York and New England. It marked in many ways the fulfillment of his father's quest for the American dream. It also signified the beginning, not just of an enduring family company, but also of a new industry, which has enabled countless travelers to experience the natural wonders and fascinating cultures of the world in ways they could never do on their own. This is a family story of innovation and a tireless pursuit of excellence. It can be traced back to that sunny July day on the dusty roads of New England. My dad was a guy who did, really was uneducated. He went to the, fort, uh, to the seventh grade, he was 14 years old, and he had to go to work, so he became a bank messenger in New York City. One night, while they were lowering a cigar box filled with rolled coin down through a dumbwaiter shaft, they kind of handed it down rather than run the dumbwaiter uh, to the vaults below. The end of the cigar box broke, and 3,000 dimes scattered in the grease at the bottom of the shaft. And my father got fired for doing that. The bank manager told him, when you find a better way to handle coin, you get your job back. So you've seen them, you can go into a supermarket or a bank and they have these aluminum coin boxes. That was his invention. So he brought them back, got his job back. He found that he could sneak out at lunch hour and he could sell those boxes to neighboring banks and he was making more money selling those boxes at lunch hour than he was, was as a teller. So he quit his job, he now had independence and he went on the road as a salesman. Arthur Talc reveled in life on the road, meeting new people and discovering hidden gems along the routes he traveled throughout New York and New England. One day, on a selling trip in 1924, Arthur was having lunch at the Wigwam restaurant at the top of the Mohawk Trail in the Berkshires of Western Massachusetts. He noticed that most of the other patrons were business travelers like himself. He wondered why so few people made this trip simply to enjoy the magnificent scenery. One thought led to another. Would vacationers be willing to travel with a knowledgeable guide, he wondered. He then hit on a revolutionary idea. What if he arranged his own tour and charged customers one price that covered all expenses, not just transportation, but a knowledgeable guide, meals, boarding houses, museum fees, even bellhop tips. He started to sketch out his first itinerary. And so he advertised in the Newark Evening News for people to take his next selling trip. And he got six people to take his next selling trip. And he had a good time. And he did it as a lark. He was a kid. But he got so many letters from the friends of those people that he ran three such trips the next year. And then he had so many letters, he bought a bus, and that was really the beginning. Arthur had no intention of foregoing his coin tray business, but the referrals from his happy guests created significant demand for more motor tours, and Arthur soon realized that he could guide these travelers full time. Arthur acquired a small fleet of buses and developed several tours beyond New York and New England, including Virginia, Nova Scotia, and Pennsylvania's Pocono Mountains. Ten years after Arthur's first tour, Talc Tours was given the first tour broker license, and the guided travel industry was born. Survival was not always easy for Talc, and the ability to adapt and find a way to evolve is an important part of the Talc story. The Great Depression and the new airline industry threatened Talc's existence. During World War II, the U.S. government forced Tauk to shut down for five years as part of the war effort. It was only after the urging of his loyal following that a reluctant Arthur reopened the business after the war. I think the thing that I learned most from him was you have to do things right. You don't put up with anything that's second best. He was so far in that direction that we didn't like to go to 
Sunday dinner with him at a restaurant because if the crackers weren't warmed, he would scream at the waiter and it would be embarrassing for us. His son, Arthur Jr., joined the family business full-time in 1956 and made his mark very quickly by being the first to charter an aircraft for leisure travel. In 1958, he became Tauk's president. Good morning, Tauk Toys. Dawn is speaking. Arthur Jr. expanded his father's vision and grew Tauk to a travel brand respected the world over. New destinations and new ways to experience them, including helicopters and trains, multiplied throughout North America and Hawaii. In 1991, he developed innovative itineraries throughout Europe. Arthur Tauk never settles, and he has a real singular focus on the guest experience. We have a, a saying internally that you can go to a restaurant and if the steak's not cooked properly, give it back. Or if you order a shirt's not fitted right, you can have it resized or whatever. But with travel, you can't return it. It only happens once. And so we all now share that same philosophy in how we operate the business today. As demand for international travel grew, Arthur Jr. passed the torch to the third generation of Tauks. Tauk's offerings soon expanded across all seven continents, from Alaska to Antarctica, Africa to Asia. New trips were developed not just based on where Tauk traveled, but how one traveled. River cruising in Europe was first introduced by Tauk in 1993, long before that craze took hold. Small ship cruising was developed to explore destinations best experienced by water. Wow. Tauk Bridges represented the first guided adventures designed specifically for families. More recently, Tauk has developed events and unique partnerships that offered exclusive, once-in-a-lifetime experiences. People want authentic experiences. Uh, they want to be more immersed in the cultures when they travel. And so those trends bode well, I think, for Tauk very much. People say the world's been discovered. How are we gonna keep discovering the world? And I don't believe that at all. I think there'll always be new ways to experience the world. So the future, I think, is very bright for Tauk and for our customers. Arthur Tauk Sr. would still recognize in every Tauk trip today, his simple, brilliant formula, what he called the ideal vacation, that is still the heart of every journey Tauk develops and guides to this day. He would also recognize something of himself, a restless desire to keep moving forward, to constantly make things better and better still. This pursuit of excellence and pioneering spirit have enabled Talc to seek and find new ways to see the world that are just as fresh today as Arthur Talc's first tour on those roads of New England.